As one of our destinations on the nationwide helicopter tour around the United States, we had the very unique opportunity to visit the U.S. Coast Guard Air Station Sacramento. This is the West Coast's only fixed-wing asset station, with an AOR that spans from the Mexican border on the south to the Canadian border on the north. What exactly is an AOR, and what does the Coast Guard do to keep all of us safe on a daily basis? All this and more in today's video. Hello and welcome to Stephen Carlson Show. I'm Stephen Carlson. I'm a tech entrepreneur, real estate investor, author, YouTuber, helicopter pilot. Leaving Reno, Nevada in the morning, we flew over the Sierra Nevada mountains, passing the Tahoe National Forest on our way. And wow, was this a beautiful flight. Now, this was my first experience flying over the mountains, so I kind of took it low and slow and I hugged the road as we crossed the mountains. And it gave us a beautiful view of everything as we entered the Sacramento Valley heading towards our destination, the McCullen Airfield. You can only kind of barely see the Coast Guard station from this camera angle. As we approached and received clearance to land, we actually were directed, obviously, to the civilian side of the airport, and it's a little bit further away from where the Coast Guard is, so you couldn't really see it from this camera angle. After landing, the public information officer and a C-27 pilot, Lieutenant J.G. Gunn, picked us up and drove us over to the air station. Uh, good morning, I'm LTJG Brennan Gunn. I've been here for about a, a little under a year now. I came straight from flight school and reported in August. Been flying the C-27 since about October of last year. It's a, a great station. We're the only uh, fixed wing asset on the West Coast. So our area of responsibility extends from the Mexican border all the way up to the Canadian border and everything in between. So we have a pretty extensive uh, AOR. We get a lot of good SAR. We also do law enforcement cases and uh, living marine resources is another uh, one of our primary missions. One thing that really surprised me was the vast array of missions the U.S. Coast Guard handles daily. Now, of course, most of us know about the helicopter search and rescue or SAR missions that we've all seen on the news. Or maybe we've seen the Weather Channel's Coast Guard Alaska series and we've watched them rescuing boaters in distress. What I didn't realize was all the additional resources the Coast Guard brings to a search and rescue. Think of it for a minute. While the MH-60T Pavehawk, which is the Coast Guard's version of a Black Hawk helicopter, it's incredibly powerful. It's still a helicopter that's limited to 300 miles of flying to the scene of the distressed boater. They can then remain on scene for about 45 minutes to rescue the survivors, then they need to fly back. But what happens if the rescue is more than 300 miles out? Or if they need to spend an hour or two searching first? This is where the limits of a helicopter start to cause some logistical problems. Now, obviously, I'm a helicopter guy. I love them. They are incredibly powerful aircraft. But there are times when a fixed-wing asset really shines. Especially when the mission calls for longer flight time, faster speeds, or greater distances. And this is where Lieutenant J.G. Gunn and the C-27 fixed-wing aircraft at Air Station Sacramento come in. If a call goes out within their AOR, and it's determined that a fixed-wing aircraft would be best for part of this mission, the only fixed-wing station on the entire west coast of the contiguous United States is Air Station Sacramento. So they are placed on the call. Now, we've mentioned AOR a few times in this video. What exactly is an AOR? AOR is our area of responsibility. If any distress signal goes off, that happens within our AOR. We are responsible for it. So if I call, like obviously we're in a helicopter, so mm -hmm. if I call on guard, you know, on the emergency channel, would I be talking to your station or would it be a different station or just how does that work? Right. You'd be talking to the sector, most likely, that you're closer closest to. Um, and then the sector would relay that to our district. And then our district would... Dispatch would you guys. Out. Exactly. Understood. So that. that's who we'd be communicating with with our distress calls. Yep. And would that be the same for boaters, aircraft? Um, Obviously different channels. but Yes. Channels. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so we can talk to boaters on channel 16 okay. um, and everything and listen to our sectors also and get tasking while we're in the air. This AOR encompasses over 1,300 miles of coastline, including also the area in which we flew from Reno earlier in the day. I didn't realize how far inland they also go as well. Now, it's comforting to know that should the worst have happened and we had an issue with our helicopter, Lieutenant JG and his crew were standing the watch, ready to respond. Primarily, we're search and rescue for long range, so if we have a SAR case, you know, hundreds of miles 
off the coast and a helicopter can't get to it just because of the range, we'll go out with our SAR gear uh, and we can actually open our ramp and cargo door, drop it out the back. So it, like if somebody was out in the water, you could drop off what type of stuff for them? So we can drop off uh, dewatering pumps if they're taking on water, maybe they're still afloat. We can drop that to them and uh, they can pump water over the side. We can also, if they're actively sinking, we can provide them rafts and also so survival equipment. So if they're in the water, you can give them like, you know, inflatables and stuff exactly. like that. Exactly. Predominantly on the helicopters, you would have a search and rescue swimmer. Do you have swimmers on the planes as well or no? We do not normally carry rescue swimmers on the plane. Uh, we can't deploy rescue swimmers out of the plane. We do have a AST aviation survival technician shop here on base and they are responsible for maintaining all of our SAR gear so they keep our rafts and uh, survival equipment tip-top shape okay. for us. So now you could transport a patient in here if you're going from airport to airport. Yes, yeah, so logistics is one of our secondary missions. We can also ferry helicopter parts from station to station. Yep. And I, I've seen before, it, obviously you could explain this better, sometimes when the helicopters go out and they're doing the actual SAR where they're sending the rest you swimmer and you guys can provide additional coverage. Yep. How does that work? Exactly. Um, if they're going pretty far off coast, I'll request that we fly up over them, provide them cover. We'll basically be on scene in case they went down for any reason. Now, while of course I cannot speak on behalf of the helicopter crews of the Coast Guard, at least from my perspective, on a civilian helicopter, the thought of having a fixed wing aircraft above us, watching over what's going on, that must be a very comforting feeling of reassurance for the helicopter search and rescue crews. But that's not the only benefit of a fixed wing. Their speed adds an additional layer of safety. Get ahead of them and talk to the boat. You can travel faster. Exactly. We'll travel faster, we can remain on scene longer, and we'll get ahead of them and talk to whatever you know uh, vessel they may be hoisting to or, or anything and uh, actually talk to them. Give them a hoisting brief so that way so they're that well prepared. So they can save the helicopter so they're not burning fuel. Exactly. And what type of plane is this? This is a C-27 Julia aircraft. It came from the Air Force originally. Uh, we picked it up in about 2016. Uh, we have seven of them here at the station currently. About 14 total in the Coast Guard. Some of the audience may be more familiar with like the um, C-130s. Yeah. So could you kind of compare kind of the difference between them? These look a little bit smaller, so it, what's the benefit of that? Definitely. Um, yeah, so we have a smaller aircraft here than the C-130. It's actually very similar to the C-130 in that it uses same engines, same propellers, and a lot of the same avionics as well. It is smaller. Uh, we only have two engines and two propellers as opposed to four. The advantage to that, we can land in, uh, in smaller airfields. Um, so that is helpful. Exactly. Our range is not as long, but usually our crew is bagged out by the time we reach our low fuel levels. Anyway. Understood. So, the, so technically the plane could go further than what the crew could just yes. for general safety reasons. Yes. So how long is, you, know, you said you call it bagging out. So what what is the time basically when the crew is no longer technically supposed to continue flying? Uh, it kind of depends on the mission, how long your specific day, uh, your crew duty day, and then also your, so your you're flight kind of hours. all the way through the day, that adds to the number. Exactly. Okay. So it, it ranges, but uh, typically between 10 and 12 hours is, is when it, it'll you'll bag out. Okay. So you could basically, you could start off and take a 10 hour flight and that would be perfectly normal for you. That would be uh, on the long, on the, the high end. Definitely. But. And it'd be for a, a SAR case, potentially. We actually had a SAR case yesterday uh, and they, they flew almost 10 hours on it outside of Humble Bay. Hop Let's inside. If we come all the way back here, this is where the ramp and cargo door are. The cargo door will open upwards, the ramp will drop downwards, can actually open it up in flight and we can use this as a platform to look for survivors, or we can also, like I said earlier, drop SAR gear out the back of the aircraft. So you load the aircraft mission dependent. So whatever the mission is, that's what you would put in the aircraft? Um, most missions, whether it be a trainer, um, like a training flight or law enforcement, uh, living marine resources or LMR, um, will actually have SAR gear on any time, just in case uh, we are the ready aircraft they can divert us. If, if you happen to just be close to a spot, exactly. even if somebody else was technically, they were the ones responsible at that moment, if you're closer, you would take it. Is Correct. Is that the understanding? Yes. Okay. Seats on uh, both sides, these can fold out uh, and provide additional space. The crew, we usually have a crew of three on any given mission. We'll have a basic air crewman, uh, MSO, and then also a drop master as well.
The drop master is responsible for dropping any gear out the back of the aircraft. The MSO is responsible for our FLIR system, our camera system, um, for surveillance. Now, how many pilots do you fly with? We have two pilots. Two we pilots. have a, a pilot, an uh, aircraft commander, and a co-pilot. I'm so a co-pilot. So the commander's in charge of the ship. It's yep. their responsibility. Exactly. And then the co-pilot does predominantly the flying, or how does that work? Uh, we trade off. Trade I'd off. say it's a pretty good 50-50 split. Um, and that way, you know, we, we don't fatigue as quick. It should come as no surprise. The Coast Guard takes safety very seriously. Before every mission, the crew conducts an operational risk management, an ORM. And this process is where they evaluate the possible risks of the mission and they compare it against the possible gains. Or said another way, is it reasonably safe to conduct this specific mission or are the risks far greater than the possibility of reward of success? Now, obviously, for each mission, the risk tolerance is slightly different depending on the nature of the situation. For example, if there's a boat in distress that's not at any immediate risk of sinking, it may not be worth having the added risk of sending an aircraft out in bad weather. However, if that boat is already sinking or there's persons in the water, the positive gains of saving human lives dramatically increases. While the aircraft commander has the final say as to whether the mission will be accepted, even a junior member is encouraged to speak out if they have any concerns. ORM, we'll usually talk about it as a crew, get the risks, look at the gains, and if the gains outweigh the risks, uh, we'll usually proceed with the mission. But again, that's after a good briefing on the mission. And we'll if like, the risks outweigh the gain, then then you determine that it, maybe it's not worth doing it, or maybe delaying it, or how does that work? Uh, yeah, we can delay or potentially come back um, with a better fitted aircraft, or you'd say we're like low on fuel, we can go stop get fuel somewhere, reassess the situation, and then... Okay. And, and then possibly another again. aircraft might be coming out, or maybe it might be the same aircraft coming back. Or... Uh, yeah, yeah. Usually, we always have a, a duty crew ready here, 24 hours, uh, seven days a week. It's usually going to be them who comes out. So now, out. obviously, search and rescue, that's predominantly, you know, if aircraft down, boat, or, you know, in distress, that type of thing. What type of missions do the Coast Guard do for law enforcement? Right, so um, we're primarily drug and migrant interdiction down uh, on the southern border. So we'll go fly patterns off the coast and, uh, you know, look for... Do you see, like, speed boats coming in? Exactly. Or... Go fast. Basically, any boat that looks suspicious, uh, we'll go and check out, and uh, we can tell a sector, and they can help us vector a, a, a Coast Guard carrier okay. to interdict. I know the Coast Guard is... There's a combination of military, but also local law... Because you guys are also federal law enforcement. Yes. Yeah, so they'll have uh, boarding team members who are actually qualified to go on board and interdict. In addition to air assets, the Coast Guard, of course, has multiple boats. Duh. And they work together to accomplish the mission. Now, because I was at an air station, they didn't have any boats at this base that I could check out. But fellow YouTuber Destin from Smarter Every Day has a great video series where he covers some of their boats. I'm super excited to continue the Coast Guard deep dive with you, and we're going to try to learn everything we can about the response boat medium, the RBM. Let's go get smarter every day. So I went down to Destin, Florida, Station Destin, and we got to do all kinds of stuff. I learned how to finger whistle. That's always fun. <laughs> It's an amazing thing to see how a normal Coast Guard station operates, and you'll see that in an upcoming video. I really appreciate Lieutenant J.G. Gunn for taking time out of his day to show us around the base. Stay tuned for more videos where we explore the cockpit of the C-27, we learn about flight school, and we even find some interesting ways to kick student loan debt to the curb. Thank you very much for watching. Please make sure you click like and subscribe. Share this video with all of your friends. It really helps the channel and I appreciate it. Thanks and I'll see you on the next one.